What would happen if you could stop worrying so much about what your team was doing all day and instead focus in on what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward? Sounds like a dream, but right now you're living the nightmare of having to overcoach, overhandhold, and overcheck in on your team's work. Let's put an end to that and instead roll out super clear five hour work plans drum beats, and more of my signature tools that drive accountability and self-sufficiency deep into your team. All you have to do is join a Leadership Lab program, and I'll help you turn your team troubles into triumphs. You'll be learning and growing alongside some peers that will become valuable business friends. So why not go beyond this podcast and join us? It could be the smartest thing you do this year. Book a call with me and see what program would best fit you over at the website, stackingyourteam.com slash programs. Hello, leader. We've all known people who've been promoted or inherited or created their own leadership role. And it was a mistake from the get-go. When people are in positions to lead and they don't really want to, or they only want to do specific parts of the role, It can create a myriad of problems right across your business, the least of which would be damage to relationships and your team culture. So join me today where I'll share with you green flags or signals that you'll want to get a glimpse of before you promote someone, and you'll especially want to take a look at whomever is currently in a leadership role at your business too. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast. It's where service-based business owners come to learn how to lead their team really, really well. I'm your host, Shelley Warren, your team and leadership coach. You're in the right place because together, we're going to lean on my 25 years of experience leading people at a Fortune 50 corporation to help you. We're going to take those complex corporate concepts and strip them down into what better fits you, that small business owner who wants to learn quickly All the things you didn't learn about, leading a high-performing team, being adored by your clients who stick with you for years, and winning every day at Operational Excellence. Thank you for joining me, and for our long-standing listeners, you know I can't start an episode without reminding you that the team that got you here may not be the team that will get you there. On last week's episode, we talked about the fact that people who are new to a leadership role often are nervous and a bit anxious about how well prepared they are for this added responsibility. Yes, I get it. After all, newly promoted people went from being a team member with peers to being a team leader, now responsible for the success of those peers. It can feel awkward, scary, and can mess with their thoughts and even cause worry about peer resentment and clients not wanting to accept them in their new role. And some of you inherited people into leadership roles when you bought a business or an asset. I hope that you inherited great people, but what if there are a few challenging folks on this newly acquired team? And then it's normal that many of you are working with partnerships, vendors, and collaborators, sometimes working with other founders who you don't gel well with. And in the leadership lab, it can be a common dilemma with some of those members that they've hired a service provider and it's been one disappointment after another. So why is that? Let's have a look at some signals that I'm encouraging you to recognize as green flags to pay attention to when you have people on your payroll who lead or you're paying for someone's services and their leadership insight. These green flag signals will confirm that you are surrounded with people who will help you create the right kind of momentum as your business grows. Okay, let's start with this one. Green flag number one, they take their role seriously. Now, this might seem obvious, but here's the kicker. People in leadership roles who are the most successful and who have the biggest impact are able to maintain their enthusiasm and commitment to the responsibilities their role requires ongoing. So they don't run hot and cold or rise to the challenge only when it suits them. 
Nope. They do the heavy lifting alongside the team during the good times and the more difficult times. Now, because they take their roles seriously, they're conscientious to meet and exceed expectations and seek to be relevant, essentially staying focused on how they can continue to add value as opposed to skating by or doing the minimum or phoning it in. The underpinning of this behavior is that they want the responsibility of leading people, a process, or a profit center, and they want it for the right reasons. I think we all can agree that sometimes people are in leadership positions or they accept a leadership role for the wrong reasons or for a specific reason, such as wanting to be in control, wanting what they see as an ability to make power moves, or money is the driving force. And you know, it's always pretty obvious that leadership aspects that are truly impactful are actually quite stretching for those folks. Leadership skills can be taught. After all, they're a skill set like any other skill set. You start with the basics, move up to intermediate, and then on to advanced, and then mastery. It's also very common that you may excel at a specific leadership skill or a specific set of leadership skills and yet need more practice and coaching for other ones. We're all human, and as we continue to grow and evolve, we all need to be introduced to experiences and opportunities that truly allow us the chance to learn, try, ask for feedback, and then take action on that feedback. Okay, here's my green flag number two. They have a passion for winning. Now, here's what I mean by that. Leaders who love what they do and who feel confident and equipped to make things happen really enjoy winning and being around other winners. Essentially, they're problem solvers and they take great pride in eliminating risks, constraints, and anything that is broken or not working as intended. And generally, they're on a mission to make things work more easily and efficiently for everyone. They see moving forward as winning. They see brightening someone's day by making something easier for them or saving them time as winning. They see helping others succeed as winning, and they use data, KPIs, and results to confirm or deny the win. They also like to tell winning stories that incorporate the before, during, and after of the storyline, using those numbers and data points to reinforce and amplify the improvements. Now, because they have an optimistic outlook and confidence to take action, they easily attract others to rally around the idea or the project or the change, and especially the outcomes. So when you have people on your leadership team that have a passion for winning, you get their energy, their enthusiasm, and their outlook, which all helps to create a positive team culture because it's so obvious that they see so much potential for growth and potential to stabilize how work gets done. And of course, they're always interested in seeing tons of potential in the people that they're responsible to. They genuinely want to hear everyone's ideas, and they like to share the wins by creating opportunities for others to shine. They're also driven by teamwork. They feel that winning is best when it's celebrated with individuals who are able to use their strengths to push the results forward. So they can often be seen coaching people, encouraging collaboration, and highlighting people's impact as a way to create a shared level of respect for one another right across the team. You know, these leaders add value every day through their attitude towards the work, the goals and overcoming challenges, and then they create this cohesive team atmosphere that people really want to be a part of. So if you have a person on the team that fits this description, you need to emphasize their contribution often and do whatever it takes to keep them. Okay, here's my green flag number three. They treat the company's money and other assets as they would their own. Mm -hmm. Now, this one is pretty self-explanatory. These leaders know the value of a dollar and the value of an hour and the value of an asset, whether it's a piece of content office furniture, a computer, or any kind of piece of equipment. They actually think before they spend, and they're intentional about using time, both their own and other people's time. 
Now, you might consider them frugal, and you might have learned by now that giving them decision space that includes a budget and clear boundaries, they are going to continue to spend time wisely and make purchasing decisions that best serve the company. So keep that up. You know, people with this core value typically have learned to respect money and time. They may have squandered both in the past and then, of course, learned from that. They may have been rewarded well for underspending or saving. So these individuals are always great to have on any cost savings project because their natural desire to be cost effective, coupled with their natural desire to be a problem solver, equates to great outcomes that have lasting effects on the team and your company. Ideally, with clear decision spaces and intended outcomes shared with them, they'll also know that you trust their rationale. You trust their decision-making for how they're going to spend. And it's not that you want a team of misers or a team of people who are afraid to spend money. No, you want people who are confident to make investments that are going to impact your operations. So you want to applaud their ability to make smart spending choices. So here's the thing. As I said earlier, leadership skills can be taught. After all, they're a skill set like any other skill set. You start with the basics, you move up to intermediate, and then on to advanced and mastery. I will never stop learning how to lead. It's my jam and it's what lights me up. And I also know that as a continual learner, there's always an experience to turn into a teachable moment. And you know it. It's a fact. Anyone in a leadership role will accelerate their impact and increase their value when they have people surrounding them that are worth learning from and who genuinely want to see them succeed. So as the CEO of your company, part of what you're responsible for is the development of your team members. So making great selections as to who will join your team and who will be in a leadership role is a key focus area for you. One that has a significant ripple effect, both short-term and long-term. So which one of these green flag signals have you noticed in your company with your team? The first one was, these leaders take their role seriously. The second one was that these leaders have a passion for winning. And the third one was that these leaders treat their company's money and other assets as they would their own. So how about keeping an eye open for these green flag signals? It will help cement the fact that you chose well and that you have a leadership team that's ready for what your business needs next. It's because of these attributes that they make great role models for others to watch in action too. And if you're not seeing these green flags, that's data for you to consider and take action on too. Starting with a conversation about how these people feel about the impact they're having as a leader. Ask them what they feel they're excelling in and what do they believe are their opportunity areas. Ask questions, listen to their responses and how they describe their work and their results and how overall they feel about the level of responsibility they have. Then it's time to compare their answers to yours. Mm -hmm. Are there any glaring gaps? Are there any misunderstandings? Are there any gray areas that if you provided more clarity, they'd be able to excel? Or do they need more training and exposure to tools and frameworks to help them out? Maybe it's time to join the Leadership Lab and offer the team program to your aspiring leaders. You know, people in this program have many green flag signals when they arrive and they want to accelerate their value even more. In the team program, there's also emerging leaders who have a desire to grow and who are eager to learn the tools designed specifically to help them be the leader that you and the business needs them to be. You can get on the wait list for the next enrollment of the Leadership Lab right now. The link is in the show notes. Before you go, would you take a minute to leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast platform you use? You know, leaving a review is how you tell a podcaster that you appreciate them. Thanks so much. It really does put a spring in my step when someone takes a minute to do this. You know, leadership can be exciting, challenging, and lonely at times. So don't go it alone. Let me help you create the team and the leadership structure that you've been craving. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today. Today.